One sample hypothesis test, lifespan of a tire. A manufacturer claims that the average life of their performance tire averages at least 20,000 miles before replacement from the features of this tire. The population standard deviation is 1,000 miles in a random sample of 80 performance tire. The mean lifespan was 9. 18,800 miles with a standard deviation of 1,020 miles. The significance level is 5% in this study. Do you have evidence to prove that the average lifespan is less than 20,000 miles? So first of all, they claim that the chu mean mu naught equals to 20,000. So I use a mu naught not mu because I am about to test this number. And then the next sentence, they said that the population standard deviation, sigma, is equals to 1,000 miles. So that is a clear sign of using Z procedures once you know the sigma. So this is a Z procedure problem. And then random sample of 80 tires, the X bar is equals to 19,800, and then standard deviation S is equals to 1020. We don't care about the sample standard deviation because we already have the population standard population standard deviation sigma that determines the Z procedure. And then the next thing that we will have to do is we will have to set up H0 and HA. So what is H0? H0 is the first sentence, at least 20,000. So mu is greater than or equal to 20,000. So that is for the at, at least. And then the, the question is, do you have evidence to prove that the average lifespan is less than, so that goes to HA, mu is less than, 20,000. All right, that is for the H0 and HA. Let's move on to the next one. So the next step is we have to calculate the test statistic and p-value. So the test statistic Z is equal to X bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of M. So that equals to a number and then p-value equals to a number. So although we already stated the given, we are not going to compute any any the z and the p value by hand, we let the calculator do it for us. So to do a z test on your calculator, you go to stat. So you press the stat is right above the program key or on the left hand side of the left arrow. So you press that and then you start and edit. You start and edit first and then you use the right arrow to go to the test. And then the first one is a z test. So you select z test and then that there is a data option and a stats option. Since we do not have data in this problem, we pick the stats option. So once you click the stats option, they will ask you to input the given to your calculator. The most important thing is number one, do not enter a wrong number. If you enter a wrong number, the entire problem is wrong. Number two, the last, option, the last line, the sign not equal, less than, greater than, what is that for? That is for the alternative hypothesis because the alternative hypothesis decide the left side, right side, or two side, which is the sign determines the p-value. The H0 doesn't determine the p-value, the HA does. That's why you have to tell your calculator which side do you want. Not equal to is both side, less than is left side, greater than is right side. So in our HA, we roll less than, that's why you pick the less than. And then you click calculate. Uh, there you can use calculate or draw. So let, let's do discuss the draw next. So let's calculate first. You have the Z, the Z value, negative 1.7889. For the Z, I usually keep three decimal places. So that would be negative 1.789. Three decimal places means you have to keep three numbers on the right-hand side of the decimal point. And then the P value, I keep four decimal places, four numbers on the right-hand side of the decimal point, 0 0.0368. And then the Z, that is called a Z value, or you can call test statistic. What happened if you press draw? If you press draw, they will give you this. So they will give you a bell curve. So I can draw the bell curve for you. So they will give you a bell curve. And then uh, this is standard normal. You have zero right in the middle. And then the Z is negative 1.789. So negative 1.789. And then this is the Z, the test statistics. And then the P value is very small. The P value is right over here. 
So this is 0 0.0368. And then one thing that they don't show you on your calculator is the rejection region. And then in this problem, we have alpha equals to what? The significance level is 5%, right? So we have alpha equals to 0 0.05. So what is that? What is that uh, really mean? So maybe I should put the alpha in red because I'm going to sketch the rejection region. So the significance level is 5%. So alpha is equal to 0 0.05 based on your HA less than the 5% area goes to the left side. And 0 0.05, you have to know that the P value, this is so small, is less than alpha. So that means the rejection region is bigger. The rejection region is like right here. So that corresponds to another Z, but the red area is the rejection region. Since the P value is inside the rejection region, another way to say this is P value is less than alpha, you reject the no hypothesis. If you want to use the Z to reject, to find the red Z, the red Z is equals to inverse norm. You input the 5% on the left, and that mean is equals to zero. Standard deviation is equals to one. So this one gives you negative 1.645. So negative 1.645, that is greater than the, your test statistics. So that is how you reject the rejection. Re, how, that's how you reject the no hypothesis. And then, so to reject the no hypothesis, Let's state that. So since p value is less than alpha, we reject h naught. Then h a is true. If you call a person, just or ask a or speak to a person who never took statistics in in their life, if you say reject h naught, h a is true. Do you think they understand what you are saying? The answer is no, they don't. So to make to write a sentence that everybody understand, you have to tell me what HA is. HA is less than 20,000 miles. So the conclusion is the lifespan of tire is less than 20,000 miles. This sentence, everybody understand. So that is my conclusion. You reject H0 and conclude the lifespan is less than 20,000 miles. So what you want to prove is correct. So you can prove it. You have evidence. Now, the next thing that I would like to do is I already came up with a conclusion. Now, how do I support my conclusion? I want to do one more thing to support myself using a confidence interval. So for the confidence interval, we are going to do what? We are going to look at the alpha first. So what is alpha? Alpha is 5%, right? So alpha is 5%. So therefore, I need a 95% confidence interval. And the formula is x bar plus or minus alpha. You have z, half alpha, and then sigma divided by square root of n. We don't plug in to calculate what it is. We go straight to our calculator. So you have to go to stat. And then we don't do the Z test this time. So you look a few more lines down to find the Z interval, Z interval. And then you select the stats option and then you uh, have to make sure you input the correct number. So this one sigma is equals to 10,000. I mean 1,000. And then X bar is uh, 198. Zero, 0, and then N is 80, and then the confidence level is 95%. 95 plus 5 is 100, so 0 0.95, and then you hit calculate, so you have, what what what, what do you have? Let's use uh, in, in integer, shall we? So I will just use integer, so the confidence interval is 19, 5, 8, 0, and then two, 219. What does that mean? Can you explain, explain the confidence interval to me? Explain. So when you explain the correct language is we are 95% confident that the average lifespan falls between those two numbers. Miles. So that is explanation. How do you support the answer you just wrote? Let's change change this to another color. 
how do you support the answer? You said you reject action art, right? Can you use the confidence interval to come up with the same conclusion? All you have to do is you recall action art, mu greater than or equal to 20,000. How do you check? How do you link this to the confidence interval? As long as you can find one number, one, one number that satisfies the inequality, and outside the confidence interval, you can say H0 is outside the confidence interval. So this one is greater than 20,000. If you say mu is equal to 30,000, 30,000 is not between those two numbers. What does that mean? What is the confidence interval mean? The confidence interval, what I said is, I have a mu. I am 95% confident that mu is between those two numbers. Or to, be, to, to make it even easier, you can say the truth is between those two numbers. And now I am going to give you a truth. I'm going to give you a number greater than 20,000. Is this true or not? So since that is outside the confidence interval, before I say the rest, you might question me and say, okay, uh, if you let mu equals to 20,000, then that is inside the confidence interval, right? But here is the thing. If you can find one number that is outside, then the entire inequality is outside. So this one, I can find one number, let's say 30,000, that is not between those two numbers, so outside the confidence interval. So we say this is outside the confidence interval. What does that mean? That means we can reject the null hypothesis. All right, so it is just that simple. The truth is between those two numbers. And then you have mu outside of that. So that means what you just wrote is not the truth. So you have to reject. So I reject H0 using confidence interval and reject H0 using p-value. So now the problem is finished. And then before we end this problem, I want to do two more big, big things. Number one is I want you to explain what the p-value means in this problem. What is p-value? So the p-value is equals to 0 0.1, 0 0.3, right? 0 0.0368. What does that mean? First of all, what's the definition of p-value? The definition is p-value is the probability that if H0 is true, the test statistics from another random sample will be as extreme or more extreme as specific, specified in HA than the test statistic observed from the given sample. So this one, we have a population. There are many, many performance tires manufactured by this uh, company. And then we have our first sample. So our first sample, we had uh, n equals to 80. And then I have a sample statistic. I have an x bar, right? The p-value is saying that I can grab another random sample. So I can grab another sample. Let's say random sample number two. I can get results like x bar and this x bar will be as extreme or more extreme than the one you have what what what, what is our x bar 19800 so for m2 um, uh, my second random sample i will get another x bar so let's say x2 bar so this number will be as extreme or more extreme than the one you got in the problem so that's what the p-value means. But how do you put this language? Like how do you plug in this language? Or I should say, how do you plug in the problem to this definition? So here is how we do it. First of all, make sure you un you state the H0 and HA again. You don't need to, but make sure it is there. So that helps you to write your answer. The answer that I want you to write is right over here. It's in this box. Here is what you have to write. You always have to stop off with if x not is true you always have stopped with this if x x not is true there is a chance equal to the p value you just plug in the p value in there that the average lifespan of performance tire is less than see the less than in in highlight the h a is in highlight as specific specified in h a is in highlight so that's why i need to put this inequality symbol of h a in there less than how about or equal why do I still need to put an or equal? You, you said specify in HA, then you take the inequality symbol for HA. But why do you still include the equal? Because the first, the first, uh, the first part 
if H not is true. So that's why you have to include the equal in there. Is that there every single time? The answer is yes. Less than or equal to, not 20,000, is 19,800. Because look at my picture. I My first X bar is 19,800. By the definition of p-value, my next X bar will be more extreme than the 19,800. So one more thing, look at the picture. We have a we have a, a less than, right? So a less than is on the left hand side. So the next X bar that you have is far off to the left side, more extreme, just go all the way to the left. That's what more extreme means. If you want to go by the no brainer method, so here is it is possible to do so. So if you want to go by the no brainer, I wrote that down. So first you have to plug in the p value and then you take the sign of x a with the equal and then you change the mu naught to x bar. So you are changing this number, the less than and the x bar. And then the rest, you just change that according to the problem, like the average lifespan, right? So sometimes they have the average of something else. So you change that according to the problem, the average lifespan of the performance tire. So you change that according to the problem. And then the p-value depends on the problem, the less than depends on the HA, and then the X bar depends on the problem. So if you want to go by the no-brainer method, that works too. And then uh, one last thing, so if you follow the calculator procedure, this is what you're supposed to see in your TI-83 or 84. So first you go to STAT, and then you go to TEST, and then you select the Z-TEST, this is a test problem, and then you enter all the givens, and then make sure this symbol is correct. This is for the HA. So this is for the HA. And then when you click calculate, you see the Z, the Z is called test statistic. And then the P value, and then this one, I drew the graph for you. But in here, so the Z, the Z is right here. So this is the Z, and then the, uh, the orange region is the P value. And then for the confidence interval, so you go to stat, stat test, so stat and then you go to test, you select the Z interval, you only have to make sure the C level is correct once you calculate, you get the confidence interval. Uh, what if the homework question asks you to sketch a graph for confidence interval? So this is how you do it. You sketch a bell curve, and then you have lower limit, you have upper limit, so that is 19581, and then 219, and then right in the middle, you have X bar that is equals to 19800. And this is a 95%, so this is 95% area in the middle, and then this piece and this piece, they add up to 5%. So we have 2.5% on the left, and 2.5% on the right, they add up to 100%. If the problem asks you to draw a picture, for confidence interval, this is what you have to do. All right, so that is the end of this video. If you think my instruction is helpful and clear, give me a like, share the video for me, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate for your help and support. See you all in the next problem. Signing off for now.